Just a few hours ago, Walter Weith published this video here where he made the outrageous claim that the overturning of Roe v. Wade is the quote, joining of church and state to publicly, to publicly make the claim that to violently kill little boys and girls is somehow a religious freedom and that removing that legal freedom is joining church and state is not only outrageous, it is completely false. That is a lie. That is not half true or somewhat true or even partially true. No, that is a complete lie and it is extremely disappointing to hear Walter Weith say this. For those that don't know, a few weeks ago the Supreme Court of the United States overturned the famous court decision Roe v. Wade that made the claim that killing children by abortion is a constitutional right. But the court said no, that was badly decided. Quote, We therefore hold that the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey must be overruled. Now, as I talked about in a previous video, this is of special importance for us Seventh-day Adventists because our church has publicly and explicitly claimed for over 30 plus years that abortion is a matter of conscience or religious freedom. It is a documented fact that the Adventist church accepted abortion in 1970-71 for the purpose of making money, but realizing that church members would not support this, they kept it a secret for over 15 years. However, in the 1980s, when the secrets were exposed in the international news like the Washington Post, Adventist church leaders became creative and began to claim that abortion was a religious issue, a matter of conscience and religious freedom. Yet despite chanting this mantra for over 30 plus years, they have never provided even one single shred of evidence why this is so. And they will not and cannot because no such evidence exists. It's a complete and total lie. Now with Roe being overturned, however, this causes huge problems for the church because now the court has rejected that there is any type of right to abortion. In a sad kind of way, this is very exciting because as church leaders and influential Adventists speak out about this, they have no choice but to reveal what they really believe. You literally cannot respond to the overturning of Roe without revealing whether or not you believe this abomination that killing children is a religious freedom. And just a few hours ago, sadly, Walter Weiss did exactly that. Now, I want to tell you that I have been waiting for several weeks to see Weiss' response because, as I have noted in previous videos, Walter Weiss will spend hours and hours and hours constantly attacking and exposing false beliefs in other denominations. He will give whole presentations and seminars in a very detailed manner criticizing and exposing false beliefs in other churches, but when his own church teaches the horrid abomination that killing children is a religious freedom, it has been surprising to many people to notice that Walter Weiss says nothing. When there is an actual, documented, real conspiracy in his own church to support and commit murder, he gives this a total pass, which doesn't make any sense. If he has no problem lecturing about the secret symbols on some clock somewhere in Germany, then why would he continue to ignore his own church supporting the violent genocide of millions of little children every year? It just doesn't add up. In this video here, episode 125 with Martin, they spend almost the entire time talking about fireballs and statues in Nashville, Tennessee, the Ukraine war, and about half the episode is talking about Roe being overturned, and then he explicitly says that these issues are joining church and state. I'll play the clip. Let's listen. And he makes laws contrary to God's laws. And then he has some moral issues which seem to be in harmony with God, and he presents himself as God, taking the authority of God and getting the second beast to implement it by joining church and state, as we have seen throughout this entire presentation. Out of his own mouth, Walter Weith says that the entire presentation demonstrates the joining of church and state, which is completely false because the Supreme Court decision has nothing to do with religious freedom. 
making it illegal to kill children is no more joining church and state any more than it is to make rape illegal or to make bank robbery illegal. To claim otherwise is completely not only unbiblical, it is absurd. Furthermore, the Supreme Court does not make abortion illegal. It only says that killing children is not a constitutional right and sends it back to the states for them to legislate. So for him to claim that this is somehow joining church and state is even more absurd and it gets worse because he tries to frame this as a Catholic issue by claiming that the Supreme Court's decision is in harmony with Rome. Listen to this clip here, especially when he says the phrase actually verbalized. Let's listen. And again, let's ask the question, which organization, worldwide organization, has consistently been on the position that the Supreme Court now actually verbalized? The Roman Catholic. It's a common factor, right? The majority of the Supreme Court justices are Roman Catholic as well. Okay. Walter Weith claims that the Supreme Court's decision is the same position as the Catholic Church, but this is absurd because the actual published court decision right here only reaffirms the legislation of the overwhelmingly Protestant USA in the mid-19th century. Abortion was illegal before Roe. That is why Roe was so significant, because it made what was illegal now a constitutional right. But prior to this time, abortion was made illegal in every state of the USA during the 19th century by who? By Protestants. The current Supreme Court right now in 2022, although overwhelmingly Catholic, their decision specifically cites from and reaffirms the legal framework put in place by Protestants. When the 14th Amendment was passed, only 8-9% to of the population was Catholic, and the reason why anti-abortion legislation even occurred was because the American Medical Association's Physician Crusade Against Abortion, which began in, notice the year, 1857. All of this is the result of not Jerry Falwell, not Franklin Graham, not James Dobson, not some bishop or cardinal somewhere. No, it was the result of primarily Protestant physicians, a crusade that Seventh-day Adventists showed open support for. If what Walter Weith claims is true, that this is the joining of church and state, then why? Why in the world were Adventist pioneers openly supporting anti-abortion legislation? This is a very well-known history, yet for some strange reason, Dr. Weith and others who make this claim act as though as they know nothing about this history. How can that possibly be? Ellen White and the Adventist pioneers founded the church in 1863, during the middle of a nationwide campaign to make abortion illegal, and yet not once, not even one time did she or anyone else even suggest that this was somehow a religious issue or that it might lead to the dreaded Sunday law. And yet today, we have people like Walter Weith and others making the completely opposite claim. Now, ask the question, why is that? Either the government has the legitimate authority and duty to legislate the Sixth Commandment, or it does not. Either children, little boys and girls, they have the right to life, or they do not. Furthermore, what makes this especially egregious is that Walter Weiss claims to present what the court actually said, yet nowhere noticed this. Nowhere in his entire hour and a half episode does he cite even one time from the court's decision. You notice that? Not even once. And this is especially embarrassing because he does put this slide up here, citing, quote, CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin. CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin. But this is the same Tubin who recently got caught masturbating on a live Zoom call and after taking some time off was put back to work. Tubin returns to CNN after Zoom masturbation incident. Walter Weith has no problem citing from a well-known sexual pervert, but won't cite even one sentence from the actual published decision of the Supreme Court, even though during this video, he claims to be presenting what they quote actually said. Here is a quote from the actual decision. By the time of the adoption of the 14th Amendment, three quarters of the states had made abortion a crime at any stage of pregnancy and the remaining states would soon follow. We Seventh-day Adventists get all triggered and we get all upset when someone claims to present what we actually believe without citing from our actual beliefs. 
But for decades, notice that whenever Adventists talk about abortion, suddenly they're totally okay doing the exact same thing. Just remember that Dr. Weiss will cite from a well-known sexual pervert, Tubin, but not from the Supreme Court justices. That by itself is embarrassing enough. Also, at around one hour and two minutes, Weiss brings up attacks and vandalism of Catholic churches in the wake of Roe being overturned and claims that these attacks will, quote, create a bond of sympathy with Catholic ideology. But this is also absurd because there have been many attacks and firebombing of non-Catholic churches and evangelical pro-life centers. CareNet is one of the largest evangelical networks of pregnancy centers in North America, and multiple CareNet and other pro-life organizations have been firebombed or vandalized. Will this now create a bond of sympathy with evangelicals also? And let's just take a moment. I mean, just take a moment and think it through. Let's suppose that this distorted view is somehow correct. Even if he is right that this will create a bond of sympathy, so what? What in the world does that have anything to do with the horrific, demonic, unbiblical claim that murdering children is somehow a religious freedom? If Walter Weith wants to comment on statues and fireballs in Nashville, then whatever. But to publicly claim that outlawing the violent murder of little boys and girls is somehow joining church and state, that is disgusting and reprehensible, and it is certainly indefensible. Walter Weith, with his PhD background, can do absolutely nothing to defend that claim. It is a lie, and it is a lie that has been used specifically to justify the violent murder of hundreds of millions of helpless little children. For over 50 years, the Seventh-day Adventist official teaching on abortion has been a lie, and the Catholic Church is correct. We Adventists as a church are wrong, and Rome is right. But does Walter Weith point out this serious problem? No, he just perpetuates this falsehood. Notice what he continually repeats in his videos. Let's listen. So it's just interesting. That's interesting. Interesting, right? It's interesting. That's interesting. Now, I find it interesting. Now, the interesting thing is, interesting, right? Now, it's interesting. Sunday legislation becomes very interesting. Then it becomes even more interesting, right? Now, Martin, this is very interesting. Just because you repeat the word interesting does not make something true. If killing children is truly a matter of joining church and state, you have to actually provide biblical evidence that the government does not have authority and duty to legislate the Sixth Commandment, something he did not and cannot do. Now, just imagine if the topic was not abortion, but rather rape or bank robbery or child molestation. What if the Supreme Court said that child molestation was not a right, and Walter Weith responded by saying that we are seeing the joining of church and state. That would be not only absurd and sick, but it would be disgraceful. Yet he did this for child murder. This is also a very important lesson for everyone, regardless of whether you like Walter Weith or not. Because of many years of terrible leadership, this error has spread like a cancer throughout the church for so long that now it's repeated everywhere. It doesn't matter if people are left or right, doesn't matter if they're liberal or conservative, doesn't matter if they are mainstream or on the edge, it doesn't matter. Even people like Walter Weith repeat this horrid abomination that murdering children is a matter of joining church and state. And since folks like to keep repeating Jesuits, 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 I mean, take a moment and think that through. I mean, imagine how happy the Jesuits must be to see our church so diseased with such a terrible doctrine, and yet people like Walter Weith are repeating it. Anyways, more can be said, of course, but that's enough for this video. At the very least, Dr. Weiss should offer an apology and explanation and provide actual official references for his claims rather than citing from some sexual pervert. That would be great. Thank you. In other news, several years ago, Walter Weiss interviewed this woman here, Nicoline, about creationism and evolution, and she has her own YouTube channel where she published a series about abortion and the problem within our Adventist church. The link is down below to check out her channel. She published a longer video about a year ago, but YouTube took the video down and she has since republished the videos. So be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching.